It's almost impossible to compress files without sacrificing quality, but I'm going to teach you how to do it seamlessly. What is up designers, welcome to my Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to be compressing a file and teaching you how to make smaller file sizes. So here we have an amazing sashimi bowl photograph and I find it really inspiring so much so that I can't seem to delete it from my computer because every time I try to delete it just I just take a look at it and I'm like oh come on let it be there you know it's just it's so good I just love it I, I would love to eat this but anyway let's go ahead and see what the size is so the file size that we were just looking at uh, as you can see here is almost five megabytes Back to Photoshop, most people save like this. They go here, they click file, then they click save as, then they click blah blah blah, JPEG, or whatever, PNG, and then they save it, and then they, they call it file name, they save it, and then maybe sometimes they, they mess with a slider without even showing the preview, and they don't know what they're doing, okay? They just don't know what they're doing. So let me, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna shut this off because that's not how professional graphic designers save files. I'm gonna teach you how to save files, all right? So instead of going here, we're gonna go export and save for web legacy. And as you can see here, and you know that I love shortcuts, Alt, Shift, Control, S for Windows and Command, Option, Shift, S for Mac. Try that out several times. It's really easy. Like it, it's just a chord. Like if you ever played piano, it's basically a chord. Okay, I played piano and, and for me, it's really easy to get used to shortcuts. Try it several times, 10, 20, 30, and then it becomes muscle memory. And once it is, then it saves you a lot of time. You don't need to think about like, oh, pointing your mouse here and then clicking 300 times. No, just click your keyboard and magic happens. Anyway, we are in this interface here. So you probably see this original, but you want to go to this tab here where it says two up. So we don't see anything because it's zoomed in, but essentially let's click fit and view. So here we are. This is showing me before and after. So before is the original file, original photograph, and then the after is compressed file. So if we look down here, it's showing me the file type, JPEG, that I'm saving, and then the file size, okay? And then also it's sh showing me this original test file and, and it's its size, but it, it's actually really confusing because this is never correct in my experience. I don't know if it's my version of Photoshop or whatever it is, but um, it's not correct because as we just saw it, it was actually almost five megabytes, right? So, but this in my experience is always correct. So you wanna look for this. So when you're compressing and when you're tweaking this area, you wanna constantly look at this point here and then check what the file size is that you're getting. So what we have here is JPEG. So you want to select JPEG. And uh, by the way, this video is going to be about compressing JPEG only because PNG is another topic. So choose JPEG. And as you can see, we have quality set up to 100, uh, but already we have shaved off almost one megabyte from our file size. Now, why is that? A lot of things. First of all, we have the progressive enabled. Now, most people think that because optimize is such a fancy word, it uh, reduces the most or optimizes or, or compresses the file the most. But actually, in truth, progressive is better than optimize, as you can see, because with optimize, we have 4.2 and with progressive, we have four without losing any quality at all. So let's talk a little bit about this layout. What we have here is quality reduction. We have blur, which literally just blurs the image. Uh, and achieves smaller file size like that, but it looks pretty bad. You want to have a crisp image. So I usually go for quality reduction first. And then we have Mate, which uh, in my experience, um, I don't know, maybe I didn't see the right file or it's dependent on another file type, but it doesn't do anything. Even if you try all of the options, it doesn't reduce the size. So that's okay. Uh, then we have something we want to bring your attention to, if, especially if you're using direct photographs. So if you if you maybe imported photograph directly from your camera or just directly from your phone, 
you will have metadata because any equipment that you take photographs with comes with metadata. If you go to properties of, an, of any image, it comes with some details depending on how it was saved. All right, so here I have just saved a file from my Photoshop just for this tutorial. And as you can see, it shows up. Even my Photoshop version shows up. So this was the program name that saved the file. It's also mentioning the date that it was saved in. It's mentioning the, the size of the file and also the resolution. This is important if you wanna check um, if your file is ready for print, then it should say 300 DPI. But if it's if it's only for web, this, uh, this is fine. So, yeah, so as you can see, if we scroll down here, we have information about camera and also advanced photo, whatever, flash maker, flash model, things like that, sharpness, saturation, all this information can be contained within a photograph taken from a professional camera. But because I found this image on the internet, downloaded it and then resaved it a uh, hundred times, it doesn't show this. Yeah, it just shows that it was saved from Photoshop. But why I am saying this is because, first of all, you can use this for information, right? If you want to see how image was made, what kind of camera it was taken by, or whatever you want to do, you can see that. But also, this metadata is actually information, and information, as we know, requires space. So, in case you're wondering, it, this is contained in metadata here. So, if you click here, none, you are going to get a JPEG that contains no information at all. So that's gonna shave off a little bit of weight from your file size, but only if it has any information. So now my image doesn't have anything. It wasn't imported from a camera, so it doesn't do anything. So if you check the file size, it stays the same no matter what. And then moving on, we have the image size here, so you can directly resize the image uh, from here, or use this percentage bar, which is pretty good, handy when you wanna, let's say, half the size of the image. So you just type in 50% and then you get the half size of the image, right? So resized twice smaller. Uh, okay, so depending on your requirements, maybe you're uploading for a website or I don't know, on a platform, some platforms uh, limit you from uploading certain file sizes and also if you're uploading on a website it's highly recommended that you upload very small file size because that determines the speed of the website as well because every time somebody accesses a website their device has to download an information that is on the website so in order for anyone to view an image they have to first download that and that depends on their internet connection so especially if they're on a train or something they might download it slow so the so the website might open up slower for them so the smaller images they get the faster their experience will be for viewing the website and the happier they're gonna be so if you're working with a developer or providing images this is a very handy tip to to keep in mind that you have to compress images all the time. So let's get back to the original size of the image because I wanna show you how to gradually reduce the size of the file. So we are at 100 quality, which is incredibly huge. If you look at this carefully, and I'm gonna reduce this to 90, let's call it 90% because I think that's what it is you will see almost no difference, right? Um, I messed with this a lot, I experimented, and you can only see the difference at this scale if you zoom in very, very hard, like, like down up to pixels, and then you might be able to see some change, some mo small movement in pixels. Even here, it's almost impossible. So it's imperceptible for the eye. You don't have to worry about reducing the quality down to 90% because it's safe to say that you can do this without losing any quality. But look at the file size. We've shaved off almost one megabyte from the original size. And we can keep going. You can actually go ahead and select this and just press the down arrow on your keyboard and just notice the file size reducing and also keep on comparing the original with the compressed version for quality control. So you want to go down as much as possible without losing quality, without it looking like it's pixelated. But And, and so far we're doing pretty good. 
right it looks almost the same so i would say like going down to 75 percent is pretty safe after that you may see some pixelation uh, it really also depends on your image and the image size the smaller your image is the quicker it's going to get pixelated because the the less pixels it has to work with at 65 we have uh 1.7 megabytes and this is a huge reduction so we can keep going i mean we can go down to 50 and uh we can go down to 30 but here is like where you already see some pixelation and loss of detail right so it's not this one look doesn't look as fresh and sharp as the one on the left and also the colors are more dull now if you are okay with reducing the size of your image then this is a huge deal for your compression um, it's going to affect the file size massively as you saw but if i leave it at 100 uh, it's still pretty good 649 kilobytes once you're done with achieving the file size that you want i'm going to press save and just going to save the test file and that's it you're done so this is how you save files with compression and i know it's it's a, a little bit lengthier more advanced way of saving and I'll, there's a lot of tweaking going on but it's essentially really good you have a lot of control and have fun with it just test it out and see how far you can go by reducing the file size all right that's it for me guys thank you so much for watching subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this and i'll see you in the next one